Hi guys, it's Emma and welcome to another episode of Sax Bites, the five minute saxophone lesson podcast. Today, I am going to be talking a little bit about articulation and tonguing. I don't think I've really touched on this too much yet in the podcast, and I am going to get pretty deep into articulation because that's such an important part of making sure the saxophone sounds the way you want it to sound. We need to make sure our notes are the exact right length and attack that we want. So I'm talking today a little bit about the tonguing basics, but specifically about where you are going to put your tongue on the reed. So a lot of students, when they start tonguing or they start learning articulation, teachers will tell them, oh, just touch the tip of the reed with your tongue. It's just a little ta-ta-ta sound and the tip of the tongue goes to the tip of the reed. This leads a lot of students to kind of get their tongue straight on, like like horizontally aligned with the reed. And their tongue quite often can sort of touch the tip of the reed and the tip of the mouthpiece at the same time. Or they can get a massive amount of tongue touching the reed and trying to do that. And that can create a suction. And then that leads to what kind of rudimentary slap tongue is. And we don't actually get a clear tonguing sound. So what I suggest for my students and for people wanting to really improve their tonguing on the saxophone is that they aim for the tip of the tongue to just about one centimetre, not even a centimetre, half a centimetre just below the tip of the reed. This means that the tip of the tongue is actually touching a very flat part of the reed and you're able to get a very small amount of contact from the tongue to the reed. It's a real balancing act here. We don't want too much of the tongue touching the reed because then we're going to get a really thick like thwack thwack kind of sound or or tip over into slap tonguing. But we don't want so little of the tongue touching the reed that you might miss <laughs> or might not have any tonguing sound at all. So a lecturer that I had in uni who was very, very knowledgeable and a great educator used to say that it's good to explain tonguing as one taste bud touching the reed. One taste bud. And the visualization for that for a lot of younger students means that you will get the right amount of contact of tongue to reed. And that placement slightly below the tip is really important. If you don't feel that you are actually getting the right uh, placement on the reed, definitely have a chat to your teacher and see if you can workshop some ideas about where on the reed you're actually tonguing. It can be really tricky for us teachers to diagnose tonguing issues and to help students with that because we can't actually see what you guys are doing. We can't see inside your mouths while you're playing and you can't see inside our mouths to get a really good example of what we're doing. So that that makes for a pretty tricky situation. <laughs> it makes it really, really hard for people. So you want to talk to your teacher and see if they can help you with that placement. So the other thing I'll bring up at this point is that with good tonguing, you actually want minimal movement of the tongue muscle. If you don't know, the tongue is a huge muscle. It's not just the bit you can see at the front. It goes down back into your throat and uh, it's a big, thick, strong muscle. So if that muscle is moving back and forth in your mouth to do the tonguing really excessively, the muscle is going to get really, really tired really, really quickly. And that means your fastest possible tonguing speed is going to slow. Essentially, the more tired the muscle, the slower the possible tonguing that you can do. So you want to visualize just the very tip, just the little pointy tip of your tongue moving at any one time. When we're tonguing, say we're doing fast semi-quavers like ticka, 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 da, 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 we want to, and you can actually practice that without the saxophone, just like I did then. Move your tongue in a way that the back of the tongue and the, the bigger part of the muscle is not actually doing the work. It's just the very tip of the tongue doing the work. And then you can get on your saxophone and you can do some repeated crotchets, some repeated notes, starting slow, 
building faster, constantly being aware and checking yourself for how your tongue is moving. Is it just that very tip, that just minimal movement placed in that just down below, half a centimeter below the tip of the reed with just one taste bud touching? That's the ideal. That's what we want to aim for with tonguing. And that's our starting point. All right. Happy practicing. Good luck trying out those tonguing tips. And until next time, this has been Sax Bites, the five-minute saxophone lesson podcast. Goodbye.